Hey everybody, I'm going to try this again. Um, got started with a uh, live check-in a couple of minutes ago, um, but I actually got interrupted with a phone call that I had to take. It was a very important call. Um, it's been a busy morning here so far. Uh, some of you may know that as I was talking about a few minutes ago, uh, unfortunately, we had our first coronavirus related fatality. Uh, it was announced last night. Someone who um, actually passed away on Friday, but the coronavirus test at that point was inconclusive. So they tested again uh, post mortem and just got the results back yesterday that it was. Um, it was related to coronavirus. This individual also had other underlying health uh, issues and, and conditions. Um, look, I think this unfortunately is, is only the first of, of more to come and should be yet another reminder as we stand with their family as they grieve um, that this is something that impacts all of us, that we all have to take this very seriously that this isn't something that only affects one group of us or another group of us, uh, that we're all in this together and that if we stand together, we can actually beat this thing. We can actually prevent, um, we can prevent this from becoming uh, something far worse than it needs to be. But it requires uh, immediate action, serious action and strong action by every one of us as individuals, stay home, self-isolate, don't go and socialize with people. Uh, this this six-foot distance, if you have to be near others who are not part of your household, uh, then maintain that six-feet distance. Don't go and bump elbows because that, that violates your six-feet distance. Uh, you know, in Hawaii, you can greet each other like this. There are other ways you can greet each other and still be respectful and still be friendly. If you're walking down the street, if you're jogging on the sidewalk, make sure that as you're passing people, you're doing so with a pretty solid six foot buffer between you. There are a lot of very specific steps that we can and should be taking ourselves um, to be able to, uh, as they say, flatten the curve, to be able to uh, try to prevent this from getting worse. Uh, we have to continue to push our, our leaders here in Hawaii as well as in, uh, in Washington nationally to stay focused on putting the health and well-being of the American people first. Uh, you know, there is rightly so a lot of concern about the economic impact, but if people are dying, the, the conversation is not going to be about whether or not you had a job. It's going to be about whether or not you had your life. That's, that's the seriousness with which we've got to treat uh, this threat and take this wartime uh, posture that's necessary for us all as a country, as individuals, as domestic manufacturers, health, respecting our healthcare professionals, as leaders, to be able to um, uh, beat this as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, take lessons learned from other countries who've already been through the worst and who are coming out the other end of it and looking at what they did uh, right and applying that here. Also looking at other countries who are still going through the worst and seeing, hey, what did they do wrong? And let us not repeat those mistakes. Um, I was on a phone call with the House Democratic leadership this morning um, it was about two hours long and went through a lot of different people asking questions, raising concerns, but the bottom line is, and I wanted to just give you a quick update on what's going on in Washington. As you know, uh, the Senate is still negotiating. When I looked at where we were 24 hours ago yesterday, things did not look very good as, uh, there was a lot of posturing and partisanship and people pointing fingers rather than just saying, you know what? Let's get off TV. Let's go sit in a room six feet away from each other and actually knock this thing out. Work out the deal. Focus directly on getting aid and assistance to those who need it, to every single American, to our small business owners, to uh, uh, those who uh, our hospitals, our healthcare providers, uh, and focus this package directly on on, on that assistance, uh, now is not the time for a, a Christmas tree bill that everyone goes and attach their favorite projects to, some of which I really care a lot about. 
but it's not the time. It's not the time for that. Now is the time where people uh, rightly so are at home, uh, but are worried about, you know, how they're going to pay the rent or afford their medicine or what, how long will they have to continue this? Uh, so we need to make sure that we get that, that, uh, that aid package passed as quickly as possible. Uh, so the update now is that um, the hope was that the Senate would be taking their procedural vote this morning. That hasn't happened. It's about five o'clock on the East Coast and they are still, uh, they are still under negotiations, say that they are, some are saying they're on the two yard line, on the five yard line. Sounds like they're getting very close. Um, procedurally, what's going to have to happen in the Senate is they will first take this uh, cloture vote, which requires 60 senators to support it. Uh, and that will then allow them to move forward and actually vote on the legislation uh, itself. Um, just want to answer a question here from Amanda Crawford. Amanda says, will I get aid? I work at Target and have to work in order to get a check. Will checks come sooner? Are they for people like me who make less than 25000 uh, It will be for you and others, uh, whether you are working uh, or not working. It, it will go to every American. Exactly the amount they're still working out, uh, but uh, that, that is the plan, and it has bipartisan support. Uh, Jacob Wilson says we're on lockdown here in Michigan. It's so hard to stay six feet apart in the grocery store. That's true. It's very difficult. Do everything you can, though, uh, both for yourself uh, and for others. Um, Let's see. So the Senate, we hope, will vote on something very soon uh, that will have bipartisan support. It's not going to make everybody happy. Uh, I am I'm reserving my judgment until I see what the final product of the legislation uh, is itself. Um, but that bill will then, once it passes the Senate, will then move to the House. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and her leadership team, they have come up with their own bill. That was a lot of what was talked about this morning of what's in it, who will it help. Uh, but it looks like they're standing by on that until... Uh, we see if, if the Senate actually moves on it. If the Senate doesn't move, then I imagine the House will start to move forward in finalizing that legislation. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm here in Hawaii. Most members of Congress are in their districts across the country, and we're still waiting to see what voting looks like. Uh, they've said they'll give us uh, 24 hours notice before we get called back to Washington for a vote. There's a possibility that it, uh, this aid package gets passed by voice vote, which means by unanimous consent, um, which means no members of Congress would not have to go back to Washington for this. There are some who are already there, and they would, they would pass it by voice vote uh, with both parties agreeing to it. I'm a little skeptical that that's going to happen uh, because all it takes is one member of the House to stand up and object to that, to that unanimous consent um, request and that will then require some form of a roll call vote. Uh, So that's where things stand now on the federal package. Uh, Someone here asked if I will uh, activate with the National Guard here in Hawaii. Uh, I've let the leadership of the National Guard know that I am ready, able, and eager to help serve the people of Hawaii right now. Uh, There has not been a mass activation as of yet. There have been a few smaller groups of people who've been put on state active duty orders to kind of help start to prepare for what an activation could look like. Uh, Two different task forces, one uh, to serve the island of Oahu, which has the most population, uh, almost a million people on this island where I live, and there will be a second task force for the other islands um, that's focused on, on uh, uh, standing up to, to support them. That support could look like everything from medical support, setting up field hospitals, logistics, uh, traffic control points, um, a lot of different things. Uh, Moana in New Zealand, kia ora, it's great to see you. I hope all of you are doing well there. I think New Zealand has been one of the most strict countries in uh, cracking down and um, trying to, again, as an island nation, actually self-isolate themselves is something that we are trying to do here uh, in in Hawaii, something that uniquely we can do.
we can do here. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, about hygiene and keeping things clean. There's been a lot of focus on uh, washing your hands. Absolutely critical. Do it throughout the day. Uh, there's a lot of videos online now showing you the proper way to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. That's real. It's real. And you can, uh, you know, we don't know all the things that we're touching, what, what might be contaminated, what not. So uh, yes, wash your hands, but that's like, that's the minimum standard. You'll want to you know, uh, wipe down and decontaminate your phone, your keys, your wallet, the things that you have with you. Maybe if you've been out and about, uh, the commonly touched things that may have touched public surfaces, make sure that you're decontaminating those things, wiping them down, whether it's with Lysol wipes or al rubbing alcohol or other things. Uh, you want to keep those things as clean as possible. Uh, but one other thing is here in Hawaii, we have a, a stay at home, a statewide order now, which means hopefully more people are not going out. But um, I want to make a couple of recommendations that even for groceries, there's a lot of great apps that are available now that can uh, allow you to order your groceries and have them delivered directly to your home. At which point uh, I encourage you again, grab those Lysol wipes or whatever you have available to you to wipe down. Uh, the outside of those containers or the food. Obviously, if it's fruit, fruit or vegetables, you want to wash them very well. Uh, but just keep in mind that anything that you'll maybe bring into your home, uh, you'll want to you'll want to wipe down and and decontaminate. Uh, this is this is advice that's coming from healthcare professionals uh, all across the country, and it's it's really critical given how long this virus lives on surfaces uh, to follow it. If for some reason you do have to go out. Uh, keep in mind that uh, your clothes could carry some contamination. So when you get home, those clothes are contaminated. Take the clothes off, put them uh, in, uh, whether it's directly in the washing machine or in a um, bag or, or whatever it is so that they don't cross-contaminate other surfaces in your home. Take a shower, fresh, clean clothes, wash, wash uh, those contaminated clothes in as, as warm or hot water as, as you are able to, obviously with soap. Uh, these are the kinds of things that we need to be doing in order to, um, in order to try to prevent sickness and infection uh, coming, coming uh, to yourself or to loved ones. Um, a lot of questions here about small businesses. Uh, uh, there is a huge amount of support in this legislation that directly goes towards small businesses, both through grants as well as through uh, no interest loans uh, with specific uh, language that will, um, sa sorry, Sandra Dornfeld says, nurses say you should strip in the bathroom, shower immediately. That's a good point. Uh, a friend of mine, Carmen, who is a nurse and who is a teacher of nurses, uh, is here joining us. She's also a longtime friend who I've done capoeira with for years and years and years. Uh, thanks, Carmen, to you and to all of our other healthcare professionals for everything, everything um, that you're doing. Um, small business support. Uh, we're trying to remove the bureaucratic barriers that often make it so hard to access that support uh, in a timely fashion, especially now where so many small businesses are on the brink of bankruptcy, many of them already going out of business. So this is, this is the purpose of this, to try to prevent you from going out of business, to help you tide, help tide you over during this time, and then uh, um, uh, also provide that direct support and assistance to, uh, to individuals. Um, Carlos is asking, when is Congress going to disperse the checks to working Americans? My hours have been cut, and I don't know if I'm going to have a job by June 1st. It will definitely be before June 1st. It will be in April. I can't give you an exact date, but it will be, uh, it, it all depends on when Congress actually passes this legislation uh, through the House and the Senate and gets it to the president's desk. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin has talked about it happening within a matter of a week or two. Uh, the problem that I see is that this is a one-time infusion of assistance, which will be helpful, but it is not, it's not going to tell, it's not going to give you certainty for what happens in May or what happens in June. 
Uh, so this is something that, again, we're, we're continuing to push for, um, you know, my resolution, it called for a monthly, monthly direct payment to every American. So you would have that certainty at least to know, okay, well, I will have this support, uh, at least until the end of this crisis. Unfortunately, um, that's not what they've chosen. The leadership in the house and Senate have chosen to do. Uh, we're going to continue fighting. We're going to continue pushing. What, what's more likely to happen is, there will, this is the third aid package. There will be a fourth, there will be a fifth, uh, and so on. Um, I am, how long will it take for the checks to get here? Dakota asks, they're saying maybe a week or two once it's actually been passed. Uh, Julie Marie says some small businesses don't qualify for loans. There's no help for business owners. That's exactly what I was talking about. Julie is rather than have all these kind of different normal requirements that might be in place that in this time of disaster, to lift those requirements. So no matter who you are, what kind of small business you have, all small businesses are suffering right now. All small businesses are suffering. So we've got it. We're, the, the goal is to be able to make it so that as a small business owner, you can get that aid, both grants and loans to be able to protect your business uh, and to protect jobs. Alyssa is asking, do we know if this is a one-time check or will money flow continuously? I, I just addressed that the language as it exists now is it's a one-time check. The administration is saying, well, look, we can go back to Congress for more help if it's needed. Trust me, it will be needed, which is why I was pushing for monthly checks for the duration of this crisis, not only the healthcare crisis, but uh, the economic crisis. Uh, let's see. Truck drivers can't get out of trucks because everything is closed. We're stuck even though we're supplying America. Thank you to all of the truck drivers who are continuing to deliver these supplies to grocery stores uh, all across the country. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I know that there's a lot of places that are closed, but I know there's a lot of places that are, that are offering takeout um, to be able to help make sure that you're fed as you're driving across the country. Uh, let's see, international students graduating. The job market is very bad. We have loans. This is, this is a challenge for everyone. This is a challenge for everyone. I think the main thing is that we need to focus on health. We need to focus on the health and lives of the American people and people around the world working with other countries um, and uh, do our best to support people so that they're able to do that. Maggie has a suggestion to grow your own garden to help supplement food. I know though I know a lot of people who are able to do that, who have a yard, are starting to dig up that yard and, and grow a garden. Uh, I know people who don't have a yard who are kind of starting to, if, even if in an apartment, uh, maybe there's a box uh, that you can um, have a box garden that you can start growing some basics, lettuce and other things. But also, um, I know here in Hawaii, there are local farmers who are still running farmers markets and who are offering uh, CSAs, which basically you sign up and you pay, I think a weekly or a monthly uh, membership fee, and you'll get a box of fresh vegetables and fruits delivered to your house every week. Uh, so this is something that we wanna be able to try to support more. If you're in Hawaii, uh, reach out to the Hawaii Farmers Union and uh, they can give you more uh, information on um, what's available in your area. Federally, we're looking at how we can provide support to those farmers across the country who are growing food uh, to feed people. Um, alrighty, I, uh, there's tons of questions here. Uh, Michelle is asking, what jams are getting you through social distancing, the musics and the fruits? Uh, touche, jams, musics and fruits. Um, I listen to a lot of different kinds of music depending on what I'm doing or, or the mood I am in. Um, my workout music is very different from kind of like my hangout and chill music. Uh, I've got everything from Tim McGraw to Lauren Hill to Jack Johnson to uh, Bob Marley to Coldplay to U2, uh, kind of like the, the chill throughout the day music. Uh, workout music is a whole other, it's a whole other story. Uh, let's see. Rhonda on Kauai. Grand Hyatt Kauai is closed as of Thursday. 
I know it's tough for everybody working there, but that's a good thing. Jeff, I don't know if L and L barbecue is open. Uh, it would be worth a call to see, um, if they're offering takeout and, and what's available. Elizabeth says, why do you answer that and not questions about all the garbage in the bill? Uh, I'm waiting to see the final results of the bill before I talk about the details of it. I know the broad strokes of what is in this legislation about support for small businesses and individuals, but there's a lot of other details in there that have not yet been released and that are still being negotiated. So I'm not going to comment too much on something that I don't know will be there or not be there in that final legislation. I'll update you guys as soon as, as soon as we know. Mark, baking bread, gardening, and vegan cooking. All of that sounds amazing. Alex Pierce, Beatles or Stones? I got to go with the Beatles. Got to go with the Beatles. Brighton, playing ukulele to calm the mood. I actually did pull out my gitalele this morning, which is kind of like a ukulele-sized six-string guitar. Slightly different tuning, but uh, I did have that out and was, was uh, picking a few tunes this morning. Nate Foy says, you should listen to Iron Maiden, a lot of good anti-war songs. I will check out Iron Maiden. Scrolling through here, scrolling through here. Um... All right, I am uh, I am actually going to go and make some lunch here now. Uh, again, I just want to um, encourage all of you to take as many precautions as possible to protect yourselves, to protect your loved ones, to protect our community, state, and our country. Now is the time for us all to stand together. Now is the time. There may be differences. There may be disagreements. Uh, political or otherwise, now is the time for us to stand together and take care of each other. <laughs> Carmen, come play virtual capoeira with us. I would love to. I will hit you up offline and see how I can get in on that action. Alrighty, everybody. Thanks for joining me for a little while. Um, thanks for keeping me company for a little while. And uh, hi, Lucas. Good to see you. Uh, take care of yourselves, and I'll check back in with you again soon. Aloha. <laughs>